Hey, are you ready for a brouhaha? From Studio 40, it's the debater! Now, here's the man who brews the ha-ha, Steve Patterson! Hello, hello, and welcome to the Debaters! The show where comedians compete and our live audience adjudicates. You know, I like my audiences like I like my coffee. Hot, frothy, and a little in my lap. <laughs> All right, are you ready to meet our first pair of debaters? Yeah. yeah. This self-proclaimed comic genius also considers himself to be an excellent parole model. Here's Ron Sparks. <laughs> Ron. And this comedian is considered quite a looker, and that's why his neighbors have drapes. Here's Alan Park. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's get into this thing quick. Your topic is fast food. Is it really that bad for us? You know, fast food is popular everywhere in the world. Everywhere, except Switzerland. It turns out that drive through fondue produces a lot of fork stabbings and third-degree chocolate burns. But everywhere else, people seem to be living by the motto, eat fast and die young. So, whereas many health problems can be attributed to the overconsumption of fast food, be it resolved that fast food is evil food. Alan Park, you're arguing for this. You have two wholesome minutes starting right now. Who can passively ignore the epidemic spike of porcine moms and dads undulating out of their minivans? dragging their gelatinous, belching tweens <laughs> into these mind-controlled through advertising junk factories that minimize brain cells and maximize waistlines by extruding diseased rivers of sludge onto a bun. <laughs> the CEOs of fast food joints, that's who, who, by the way, dine regularly on free-range organic steak rather than their own toxic dreck. The fast food industry pushes candy and games and cheesy little toys to lure unsuspecting children, just like creepy men in crummy white vans. It's okay, folks, they're not here. <laughs> One fast food game few customers know about is factory farming, where slaughterhouse animals are fed dead slaughterhouse animals, thereby engaging the customer with an unwitting spin of mad cow roulette. A mad cow is nature warning us of the abuse in the fast food system. It results in the inability of the cow to stand up, which is also the sign of someone who's eaten too much fast food. <laughs> now that's a disgusting image, but you likely feel otherwise if you sell motorized scooter chairs. <laughs> There's no better clue that evil is involved than that they are called fast food chains, as in slavery. <laughs> Alan Park. Very valid points. And now, Ron Sparks, <laughs> you have two minutes to have it your way and tell us why fast food is not all bad. Ron Sparks. Alan, my life is a blur of action. <laughs> so a greasy meat-flavored disc is exactly what the doctor ordered. And speaking of doctors, fast food is 100% healthy and good for you. I know that because it says so on their placemats. <laughs> fast food is also responsible for every single major innovation of the last century. Where would we be without the technology to inject obscene amounts of cheese into pizza crusts? <laughs> I'm sure Colonel Sanders had dozens of applications in mind when he invented that nuclear green coleslaw. <laughs> Steve, I keep a tub of that in my trunk just in case my car breaks down and I need to signal for help. <laughs> Alan, how about the miracle of boneless chicken wings? Every year, thousands of people used to choke to death on dangerous natural chicken wings. And sure, the specter of breeding boneless chickens seems cruel, but it makes them easier to catch and transport, and the bottom line is, it saves lives. And even if Alan's paranoid wild accusations were true and fast food was not healthy, who cares? We have free health care. So eat what you want, then just pop into the hospital for a complimentary triple bypass, because that is exactly the kind of freedom that this great country stands for. 
Ron Sparks, everyone. Wow. It is time now for the bare knuckle round. This is your chance, debaters, for you to cook up some finger licking good points and grill your opponent with a one two combo. <laughs> We're talking fast food, so voice your beef and drive through their argument. Order up. Alan, we owe, we owe a debt of gratitude to the fast food companies because without them, the world would just be full of cows. Imagine a world <laughs> where the population of cows has run amok. Many of them have dangerous horns. You have to admit, he makes a ridiculous point, Alan. It, it, is, a, it is a ridiculous point and uh, somewhat oxygen-starved thought pattern. <laughs> But the industry, they're the ones that actually breed those cows. So without the industry, those cows wouldn't be there. It's kind of like the U.S. creating the Mujahideen so they can keep on fighting in a war. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's... Oh, they don't like it's... the Mujahideen. Yeah. Okay. No. If I can make another point... I would love it if you made one. Yeah. <laughs> Fast food is yummy. Well... <laughs> You can't really argue with that. That's the bare knuckle round, everybody. <laughs> it is time now for the firing line. In my hand are questions on fast food brought to you by General Sanders Fried Chicken. <laughs> One whiff and you'll know it's higher rank. <laughs> Here are your questions. A class action suit against Taco Bell claims that the beef the restaurant uses is actually 65% what? Ron. Uh, nutrition. <laughs> and the other 35% is vitamins, which somehow adds up to the magical number of 110% awesome. <laughs> I think that extra 10% is the beef. <laughs> Wrong four times. <laughs> Allen Park. Is 65% employee acne droppings. That's nice. That number is slightly high. <laughs> the actual answer is it is 65% filler, which is oats, soy, and other things, obviously. In 2006, McDonald's filed a 55-page patent application for what new product? Alan. Uh, I don't know, something crappy in between two pieces of crappy bread? <laughs> Close, but not what I have here. Ron Sparks. Uh, that would be a uh, McSoylent Green. Which, which surprisingly is only 35% people. <laughs> the other 65% is oats and soy. <laughs> the actual answer is a hot deli sandwich. 55 page patent application <laughs> for a hot deli sandwich. That makes you wonder. Name the cult film in which a pair of stoners get the munchies and go on a drug induced adventure. <laughs> I don't know where to go first. Uh, Alan? That's not a movie, that's high school. <laughs> <laughs> Two points. Incorrect, though. Ron Sparks? Yep. I haven't seen uh, Titanic, so I'm gonna say Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like roughly the plot line, yeah. No, the actual answer is Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And that's the firing line, everybody. It is almost time now for our studio audience to pick a winner, but first, here again with one more minute to play catch up and get out of this pickle, it's Ron Sparks. One thing has been lost in the debate so far tonight, and that is, what about the victims? If we did what Alan suggested and banned fast food, what would happen to Wendy and Root Bear? The Hamburglar might be forced to turn to a life of actual crime. <laughs> These characters have earned our love and respect, in the dictionary under leadership, there is a picture of Mayor McCheese. <laughs> we have a choice to make, and we can either pretend that we don't approve, or just admit what we all know we already like, blow this pop stand, and pick up some Whoppers on the way home. Because why did my grandfather die defending us from the North Koreans if it wasn't to give us the freedom to gorge on Chicken McNuggets, Taco Supremes, and Papa Burgers in the comfort of our own cars before washing them down with Frosty's a and Root Beer and KFC Gravy? <laughs> and if any of these fast food franchises are tuning in, I am expecting gift certificates in the mail. Ron Sparks, everyone! <laughs> and now... To prove again why fast food is fat food, here's more food for thought 
from Allen Park. Now research, research shows that children's brains grow most rapidly from birth to age three, and that eating a primarily fast food diet, a processed food diet until age three, rather than healthy food, irreversibly lowers the IQ. Now this has been graphically demonstrated. And for that, I'd like to thank Ron Sparks for going out of his way. <laughs> Alan Park. And now it is time for our wise studio audience to make their decision. By applause, who thinks that Alan's fast food facts deserve a break today? Alan Park. Some good support. And who found fast food fan Ron Sparks to be the combination of fact and funny? Ron Sparks. Well, it is too close to call. Ron Sparks is our winner. Fast food is not evil. Big hand for Ron Sparks and Alan Park, everybody. We'll be right back with more of the debaters.